hunger. He's realizing, man, sin is not all what it, it was uh, barked up to be. Sin is not where it's at. Verse 18, he's, he gets the idea, I will arise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thine hired servants. So he gets this idea, I'll go to my father, and I treated him like trash, but because I'm his son, maybe he'll let me be a servant. He's definitely not going to let me be a son again. That is like unheard of. And even for him to let me be a servant, that, that, that's just probably not going to happen. But maybe I'll go and ask. Because if I just stay here, I'm going to die of hunger. He's thinking. Verse 20. Look what the Bible says. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. His father sees him afar off running towards him his father in order to run in that day they would wear robes and tunics and they would have to lift up they would have to lift up their their tunic here and it would be extremely humiliating for this father to do this but he would have to pick up his his dress so he could run over here to to his son and he the bible doesn't say he goes Look at verse 21. It says, And the son said to his father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe. Is that what it says? You know what, you know what I think it should say? Bring, servants, get over here and punch him in the nose. Because that's the way he treated his father terribly. But the father responds in love. The father in this story says, I don't care what you've done. I don't care where you've been. I don't care how you treated me. I don't care how you sinned against me. I don't care all the things you've done. I love you. I forgive you. I see your pain. And I feel your hurt. His son right here was filthy. He was eating with pigs. Imagine how gross the mud. I mean, it, he was eating what the pigs were eating. Just filthy, but the father didn't care. He falls and runs and falls on his neck and kisses him and embraces him. And he says, bring forth the best robe. Not just some other, not just a rag, the best robe in all the house. Look what it says. And put it on him. And put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. Who in here has a ring? A ring right here. I have a ring my wife gave me when I got married. And this ring symbolizes that I am married to my wife. It shows that we are married. It shows that I'm hers, and her ring shows that she's mine. So this was a big deal when his father brings him the best robe in all the house and puts it on him, and he brings a ring and puts a ring on him. What he's saying is, you're mine. You're mine. I love you. You're forgiven. All wrongs are made right because I forgive you. What a powerful powerful forgiving loving father in you in your seat right now you may have tried sin many of you have and you've tried to go your own way and you've tried to live it up and live for yourself and do what you want when you want and make yourself happy and listen to the lies of the devil and the lies of the world who hates you you've listened to those lies and you've gone down that path and you've tried sin and where has it left you did it, did, it, did it give you all the things it promised? Where did sin leave you? It leaves you with destruction and misery. Sin is never worth it. Turn to the Father. Remember the Father. Wake up and remember what He's done for you. He saved you from hell. You were walking blindfolded towards hell and you had no way to save yourself. But He loved you. And he had mercy on you and compassion on you. For by grace are you saved through faith. And then not of yourselves is the gift of God. Not of works lest any man should boast. Who in here earned their salvation? Who worked really hard for their salvation? None of us did. We cannot be saved that way. God looked at us in our need when there's nothing we could do. And he loved us. And he had compassion on us right where we were. And he ran towards us. And he gives us, he clothes us in his righteousness. The Bible says we are made now in the righteousness of Christ. 
Righteous, Christ is so righteous. He's so perfect. He's so blameless. He's spotless. When God sees you, if you're saved, and if Jesus Christ, you've, you've accepted his blood that he shed on the cross for your sin, when God sees you, now he sees you as righteous. He sees you as holy. He sees you as perfect, as forgiven, not because of what you've done, but because of what Christ has done for you. I don't know about you guys, but that's good news. That's exciting. We don't have to, the devil would love to just beat you up over your sin. And we all know sin's terrible, but Jesus has paid a higher price. And he is greater than all the destruction that sin has caused. And you may say, I'm ruined, I'm messed up, I'm, I'm too far gone. God won't use me, God can't forgive me, I've sinned too greatly, you don't know what I've done. I don't have to know what you've done. God knows exactly what you've done. But God loves you even still. And he will still forgive you. Some of you in here, maybe you've never been saved. You've never truly trusted Christ and him alone for salvation. You've never humbled yourself like this guy did and come to your father and cried out to him and say, forgive me, please, I'm no more worthy. But if you will, God will save you today. He'll save you, he promises to. Look what the Bible says, this is so exciting. He throws a party. But the father said, uh, verse 23, and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and be married. The father just throws a barbecue. He has a barbecue party. I mean, he's, he's frying this, this young fatted calf. I mean, I don't know about you, but who's ever had a really delicious, juicy steak? Oh, we, we had a pastor one time take us out to lunch and got us a really juicy steak, and oh, it just melts in your mouth, the, the fattiness of it. And this is how this calf was. I mean, this is exciting. They, they kill this fatty calf, and they're married. They're being excited. It's a party. The prodigal son, the one who betrayed the father and ran off and left, has now come back home, and it's exciting. Look what the Bible says. Verse number 24, for this my son was dead. And is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. His son was dead. That's where sin leads. The wages of sin is what? Right? But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now he's made alive. He was lost. He was helpless. But now he's found. That's how we were. If you're saved, I hope you can relate, and I hope you get excited because you remember back to when you came to the point of the end of your sin, and you trusted Jesus. You realized there was no one else who could save you, no one else who could satisfy, no one else who could forgive you, but Jesus could. And remember when you came to your father, what did he do? Did he just push you away? No. He embraced you the same way as we see in this story here, and it's exciting Verse 20, verse uh, 25. Now the elder son was in the field, and he came and drew nigh to the house, and he heard the music and dancing. Oh, the elder son comes out from working, and he hears there's a party going on. Oh, man, there's some music playing, and there, oh, he smells the barbecue maybe. Mm -mm -mm. And he's thinking, what is going on here? Why is there this party? Look what he says. And he comes in at verse 20. Uh, 26, and he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he, with, he hath received his son safe and sound. And he was angry. What? Do you, do, is that what it says? He was angry. His, his brother ran off and disappeared. And maybe they thought he was dead, because he didn't come back for a while. And look what happens. He finally comes back, and he's still alive. And what's it say? And he was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. So he acts like a little brat. He acts like, oh, man, I'm so mad. I can't believe he came home, and my father threw him a party. He just goes out and wastes all my father's money, and you throw him a party. And he starts pouting, and he says, mm, I'm not going in. Look at the Bible says, he would not go in, so his father came out. I love our father. I love our God. Jesus is showing us this to show us and tell us this is our God. He's a great God. He's a loving God. He's a merciful God. He's a forgiving God. He's always there, and no matter how we act and how we treat him, he always comes to us. He always comes to us. 
No matter, this guy was acting like a little brat, and he was a goody-goody two-shoes. You remember, he stayed with the father, and he thinks he deserves to be treated better than this other guy, this, his brother that wasted everything. But look at this, verse 29, And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment. And yet thou never gavest me a kid that I make make, make that I make may that is a tongue twister, that I might make merry with my friends. He's like, you never gave me a little kid that I can that's a baby goat, by the way. They're not trying to kill a, a kid. <laughs> he said, you never gave me a baby goat that I can have a party with my friends. And I stayed here and I served you and I didn't go anywhere and I didn't do anything wrong because I'm just your perfect little angel and you never rewarded me. But look what he says. But as soon as this thy, come, thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed him for him, the fatted calf. And he said unto him, son, thou art ever with me. And all that I have is thine. And it was meet that I should make merry and be glad. For this thy brother was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. There are two groups of people in this room right now. Two groups of people. There are, there's a group of people that is, you've tried sin. You've done who knows what. Only you and the Lord know, maybe, maybe other people know. But you've tried sin and living for yourself. And you've gone down that path. The devil promised it would make you happy. It would bring you joy. You could be satisfied if you would just try this and try that and do this and do that. And you've done it and you've realized it leaves you empty and broken and miserable and discouraged. That's what sin always leads to. And you know that. And there's another group, in you, uh, another group in here, you've never done very much wrong. If someone were to say, you are guilty of death, you would be like, what? No. I mean, I come to church, and I'm a pretty good guy, and I, I've never, I'm, I'm a pretty good girl. I've never killed anybody. I, I've never done anything really that bad. I mean, I, I'm pretty faithful to church, and, and I read my Bible every now and then, and, and I've never done terribly wrong things. I've been with the Father, and I've never left Him, and I've always gone to church, and He's just my lifestyle, and I'm a pretty good person. There's another group that thinks like that, that you're pretty good, you're okay. But in this group of people, I think there are very few that are truly happy, that are truly joyful. All the time. See, both of these people, the one, the son who tried sin, he was pretty miserable. He realized sin leads to misery. But the guy who was with the father, he was pretty miserable too. Because he thought, God just wants, I just want to get something out of my father. I just want to, I just want to, I want him to throw me a party and give me a baby goat. I just want what, what God, what I can get out of God. And I don't care. I don't care about the father. Neither of these children, neither of these sons cared about their father at all. They didn't realize. Look at this very important thing, verse 31. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is what? All that I have is thine. That's what the Bible says. Now, I want you to let that soak in. If you would say unashamedly, I am a follower of Christ. I've been, I have come to the end of myself and I've trusted in Jesus Christ alone for my salvation. And I'm his and I belong to him. If you would say, I'm a Christian. There are many of you in here who would say that. I'm a Christian. Do you realize this? What this means to you? Everything that God has, you have access to. Let that sink in for a second. You know where God walks up in heaven? On streets of gold. He has everything. He owns the cattle, the Bible says, on a thousand hills. And by the way, he owns the hills that the cattle are on. He owns this world, all the riches, all, everything that this world has, he owns. And guess what? You have access to that. You have access to that. Do you really believe that? Do you believe that's true? It's right there in the Bible. If you say, I don't believe that, then you don't believe the Bible because the Bible says everything that God has, our Father, we have in Him. 
Our Father is a God of love. He loves every one of you. He knows how many hairs you have on your head before and after you get a haircut. He knows. I don't know if he's got an angel up there that recounts every time you get a haircut. I don't know how it is, but he knows about you. He sees you where you are when you're hurting, when you're broken, when you're lonely, when you're discouraged, when you're depressed, when you can't sleep at night, when you, you, the devil likes to get in your head and beat you up and tell you, I can't believe you thought that. I can't believe you said that. I can't believe you, you looked at that. I can't believe you went there. I can't believe you drank that. I can't believe you smoked that. When the devil gets in your head and starts beating you up, and he gives you a stick, and, and he says, beat yourself, and you start beating yourself up. And you say, I am that. And you believe his lies. I know how he works. The devil hates you. He hates every one of you. If you're not saved, he wants to drag you down to hell. He wants to promise you, oh, you can get saved next week. You can get saved next year. You can get saved when you're old and gray and you've lived your life and you've had your fun. And the devil will lie to you because he hates you. The devil will say to you who are saved, oh, man, God could never use you. God doesn't want anything to do with you. Your father's mad at you. It's not any fun to serve God. It's the greatest life ever to surrender everything to God. To say, you are my all in all. There's a, there's a story of a, a person in the Bible named Ornan. Who here has ever heard of Ornan? Or, most people, Ornan was just a regular guy. He was a wheat thresher just out in this field. And David sinned a great sin. And he counted all these men that he had because he wanted to feel really good about himself. He wanted to puff up his pride and think, oh, they all belong to me. I'm unstoppable. I don't need the Lord's help. And he sinned. And the, the, the angel of the Lord came down and started killing people with the pestilence. And David said, please, God, forgive me. I was wrong. I sinned. Please don't kill all these people. And he went to a man's house named Ornan. And he went to his threshing floor. And he said, Ornan, I want to I buy Everything you have. I want to buy all your weed. I want to buy your, your whole place. I want to buy it. I'll pay top dollar. And guess what Ornan said? Hmm, that's a lot of money. I can make a big profit off of this. No. Ornan said, I give it all. He said those words. I give it all. And I want to ask you right now where you're sitting. Have you given all to Jesus? Have you sold out your life to him? Have you given him everything? Have you surrendered to his will? And you may say, I don't know God's will for my life. God always reveals his will through his word. God's will is clearly revealed in his word. This is God's will. God is willing that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's why we're going to Africa. That's why you and I are called to go both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria, right here where you are. We're called to get the gospel to the lost. We're here for a reason. God doesn't have you to come in here and sit and soak and sour. God wants to use you. God saved you to want to seek him through his word, to want to serve him in your local church, get behind your pastor and his wonderful heart to get the gospel to people in this area. And you want to share the gospel with the lost. There's a lost world out here that needs to hear that they're loved. They need to know about this father that we just heard about. They need to know he loves them and he cares about them and he knows how many hairs they have on their head and he wants them to be saved. Do you believe it? Do you believe in a real place called hell? It's real. Jesus is coming back soon, any day now. With heads bowed and eyes closed, I want you just to make a quick decision. Right now where you are, just a quick decision. If you're not saved, make a decision to say, I want to be saved. You can come up to Pastor Barnett after the service or any other time or me or my wife, anybody, and just say, I want to be saved. And if you are saved, just make a quick decision to surrender everything to him. He's given all for you. Will you give it all for him? Yes. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you for your word. Thank you for this wonderful reminder. To Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Let's give him a hand. Cheer him on. Cheer him on. And children, you, you listened so well. You listened so well. What a wonderful blessing it is to see you listening so, so well. And brother, I appreciate you so much. And we've been blessed today to have Brother Wilkerson with us here. And uh, he 
He's got so much energy for the Lord, loves the Lord, and that's a joy to my heart to see these young men um, on fire for God. And Danny, my son, will be preaching this morning as well, and um, I just, I'm just so excited. God raising up young men in our generation, and this is a great blessing. This is a wonderful, wonderful blessing. And uh, heads about, eyes are closed. Let me ask you a question. Nobody look around. Um, how many of you know you're going to heaven for sure? You're 100% sure? Okay. You can put your hand down. You can put your hand down. You can put your hand down. Thank you so much. Okay. Who's here to say, I don't know I'm going to heaven. I'm not sure. I don't know I'm going to heaven. I need to be saved. Anybody like that? Anybody like that? Is there somebody here today that you say, preacher, I need to surrender to the Lord. He can have it all. I haven't given him all yet, but he can have it. After this message, I need to give it all. I need to surrender. I'll give it all, whatever God wants. I'm his. Go where he wants me to go. Do what he wants me to do. Anybody like that haven't surrendered yet? Need to surrender? Would you raise your hand? Okay, if you need to do it, make sure. Oh, we got a hand back there. God bless you. Thank you. That's encouraging to the missionary. God bless you. That's wonderful, Brother Nate. Thank God. This dear lady wants to surrender her all, give her all to God. Isn't that wonderful? Anybody else? Anybody else? Oh, one, two. Got, got one boy here. He's one to surrender this morning. Wonderful. Got another. Got another. Okay, you haven't done it yet? You haven't done it yet. Okay. You surrender your all. Kneel at the um, altar right here. And say, God, I sacrifice my all to you. If you've never done it. If you've never done it. Yeah, you raised your hand. Just kneel. Yeah, kneel at the altar and say, God, I give you my all. Dear lady, back there, I want to encourage you. Come just kneel at the altar. Yes, you raised your hand. Yes, come kneel at the altar. Say, I'm giving God my all. He can have it all. He can have it all. Whatever he wants. I'll be what he wants me. Go where he wants me to go. Right, is there a hand up? Is that our hand? Come. Come if you want to deliver your all. The little girl wants to give her all. She's saying, God, you can have anything you want. I'm yours. Do, what you, do, with, do with me whatever you want. Isn't that wonderful? Is there anybody else that have never done it? So, God, I'm all yours. I'll go where you want me to go. Do what you want me to be, do. I'll be what you want me to be. I haven't done it yet. If you haven't done it, give them your all. Yes. Yes, you can come to the altar and say, God, here's my life. I give my all to you. I surrender my all. Wherever you want, wherever you want me to go, whatever you want me to do, I'm not holding back on you. You love me. Thank you, missionary friend. Thank you, Brother Nate. The Holy Spirit of God has used you. That's encouraging to the missionary. He wants to be used of the Lord. Who knows what God's going to do in the lives of these precious ones in the future as they follow the Lord. You never know what fruit may come. Never know what they may do. Father, I thank you for speaking. I thank you for using Brother Nate. Thank you, dear God. These uh, surrendering their all and say, whatever you want, you can have their life. Th their life is yours. To do what you want them to do. To go where you want them to go. May you bless them. May you use them. Oh, God, we need laborers. I pray that you would use these precious ones in such a way. I pray for Brother Nate. Dear God, I pray that you continue using them, his wife, their future, and I just pray your hand to be upon them, provide their needs. Thank you we can partner with them as burden. Thank you we can be a help. Thank you we can be an encouragement. He's been an encouragement to us, and I know our people will love him. I know it. We love him, and he loves us. And we thank you for missionaries. Thank you for Danny that will be also preaching for us in a little while. May the spirit of God come upon him, his wife on him, his children. Thank you for raising him up as well to the Spanish-speaking people in this world. And may you use him, dear God. We thank you so much for this special treat today. In Jesus' name, amen. Give Brother Nate a wonderful hand. Encourage him. God bless you, Brother Nate. I want you to... Look at his display and pray for him. I'm excited about what the Lord's doing, what he's going to do. Thank God for his burden there. Be wonderful. Thank God for you. And Danny, his burden for the Spanish-speaking world. And the body, they were a blessing to us Thursday night. We're out soul and I couldn't speak the Spanish. Thank God Danny and his wife were able to lead the Spanish to the Lord, right? 
Amen. And so we're excited to hear him preach in a little while as well. And uh, you, you listen so well, children. You're behaving so well. I'm so proud of you. And thank God for you Sunday school teachers. You have them up here. And, and I want them to hear Brother Nate. Thank God so much for, for them l listening so well. So well. And we appreciate Got some for the rest of you. Mr. Kane this morning. We love you. What a message. What a message God gave you. How much he loves you. What a message for us all. What a message for us. We've been so blessed. Let's stand. We're going to take about a 10-minute break. And we want to start right back. Uh, sharply right here um, we don't have much time here um, but a short break okay at 9 45 uh, 10 45 at 10 45 we want to start right into it on the first song okay joy thank you you can come to the piano okay and um, and we're, we're going to take a, a short short break uh, to 10 45 and the first congregational song will start at 1045. Let's pray, shall we? Let's pray. Father, bless the people. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed. <laughs>